All right, today we're gonna to be doing a teardown on an LED controller. Now this is meant to control LED strip. So this is just going to be a simple low voltage PWM controller. So there we go, we have an LED dimmer and it's just got your input jack and your output jack. And I do believe a lot of different LED strip and LED strip power supplies use uh, this sort of connector. I think these are just like standard 2.1 millimeter uh, barrel jacks So you should just be able to wire this from you know your power supply and then to your LED strip and it just goes right in line So that's really nice. We just have one control on this which is this knob Which if we turn it it clicks which of course when it's all the way off That's probably uh, just a hardware power off to make sure nothing can get to the LEDs and then that of course just uh, adjust up and down to adjust your brightness and I'm assuming that this is just going to be a really simple PWM dimmer. Some LED strip. We'll go ahead and plug this into the output. So I'm going to unplug this light and I'm going to plug it into our dimmer. Kind of flickers there when you first plug it in. We should be able to just turn that on and adjust it. It's actually quite a bit of dead space from when you hear that click to turn it on to where it actually starts to light up the LED strip. So what I'm interested in is to see what the frequency of this thing is. So if we put this across here. So according to this meter, the frequency that this thing is running at is approximately 680 hertz. And if we change the, uh, the knob position, that shouldn't really vary. 684 hertz seems to be the number that this is showing. We can check one more thing while I have this meter out. We'll go ahead and select duty cycle. And of course it's at 0% until our lights start to come on and then it's going to start creeping up. And we can go from 0% duty cycle up to 93% duty cycle. So we can't quite get to 100%. So anyway, let's go ahead and pull this guy apart, see what's inside of it. If I had to guess, it's probably something really simple. Uh, either some kind of purpose-built circuit or blob I see or maybe even just a 555 timer. I'm guessing it's not a microcontroller because uh, if it was a microcontroller I would expect it to be able to hit 100% duty cycle without any issues. But we got two screws on the back and that's just going to pull apart like that and there's a little circuit board. Uh, front of the circuit board has nothing on it but the potentiometer so we don't even have to take the whole thing out can just look at this section as it is. All right, I got the macro lens out so we can take a nice close look at the circuit board. And the first thing that I noticed with this is U3 right here is in any 555 timer. So my guess that this thing could be using a 555 timer was indeed correct. This thing is going to be the MOSFET that's driven off of the 555 timer. So this is what's uh, doing the PWM switching for the actual LEDs. Up here we have a 78L05 regulator. So that guy is going to be providing five volts for the rest of the circuitry. And of course that's going to be necessary because I believe that the maximum supply voltage for a 555 timer is going to be something like 15 volts and this thing is rated to have a 24 volt input so you have to have something to step the voltage down. The only thing in here that seems out of place is this guy and I'm not real sure what they're doing with it. That is an LM358, which I believe is an op amp. Because usually with these 555 PWM circuits, you don't really need anything but a 555 and a couple of supporting components. So I did just go ahead and look this up, but the LM358 is a dual op amp. All right, so I've done a bit of probing on this, and what I've found is that one of the outputs of the op amp here is going directly to the gate of the MOSFET. And on the inputs of that op amp, one of the inputs is going to uh, pin two of the 555 timer, which is a trigger pin, and the other one is going to one of these uh, potentiometer legs. And with a little bit of quick Google searching, I found this circuit. So this guy has a very similar circuit at least. This, this is going to be the waveform that you get between uh, pins two and six here. And then essentially what I think is happening is you're using the set point of the potentiometer and using this as a comparator and you're varying where this op amp is on at depending on where you're at on this sort of ramp waveform 
So this is kind of an interesting way to do it. Now when I think of a 555 PWM circuit, I think of circuits like this. So this really only uses the 555 timer and doesn't require an op amp. And it probably works with about the same amount of effectiveness as this does. I'm not really sure what the advantages of using this circuit over one that only uses a 555 timer are, but, but for some reason they decided to implement the circuit with the uh, op amp in it. Another thing I did check is that the 5 volt regulator is powering both the 555 timer and the op amp. I thought maybe they were using this op amp type circuit to drive the op amp at a higher voltage so that you could drive the gate of the MOSFET at a higher voltage and in theory have a bit of a better efficiency, but uh, it doesn't seem that they're doing that. They may actually be using a logic level MOSFET. We'll see if I can find any information on that particular MOSFET that's on here. All right, so the number that I could read off this MOSFET was D514. And looking at the data sheet for that MOSFET, it has a rating for an RDS on of 11.9 milliohms with a gate voltage of 4.5 volts. So this is rated for logic level use. And if you're curious, the RDS on rating is 5.9 milliohms when you have 10 volts on the gate. And this MOSFET is rated at 30 volts and 46 amps. So it's a reasonably beefy little MOSFET to have in something like this. If anyone knows why they decided to uh, use the op amp and the 555 timer, go ahead and leave that down into the comments because I'm kind of curious as to what the advantages of this circuit are over just using the one that only uses the 555 timer. And of course, if you like this video, go ahead and click on that like button. If you wanna see more from this channel, go ahead and click on the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video, you guys. Bye.